Hey YouTube, what's going on? My name is ADC Art Attack and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be trying not to move so much. What am I doing? I'm going to be drawing Naruto. In fact, I'm going to be showing you how to draw Naruto Uzumaki in a fighting pose. Now, this was highly requested by you guys. I actually did a poll on the YouTube community tab and you guys just really wanted to see some Naruto work and I guess I kind of want to do more Naruto stuff. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Now, this tutorial is just going to be like vague information. I'm doing my best to sort of tell you what I'm doing and instruct you along the way. But I must say, if you guys want to get more in detail and more in-depth sort of tutorials and learn a little bit more behind the process, of drawing then I would say follow my live streams at twitch.tv forward slash ADC art attack that is where I do regular live streams I actually just became an affiliate so I'm doing live streams pretty regularly now and you guys can ask me questions get involved and I can just give you much better answers and sort of show you things a little bit more clearly and hopefully help you to become a better artist so with that being said I kind of ramble on a bit too much here and I'm gonna let you guys enjoy the rest of the video so please do enjoy it and I will see you in the next one take care Okay guys, so to kick things off, we're going to start by drawing a head. Now to draw a head, we're just going to draw a simple circle and we're going to cut it in half using a line going up the center and a line going across the middle. The line up the center is going to be halfway down the face and the line across is going to be on the eye line. Now wherever these two lines cross over, that is the center point of your face. Now for changing the position of your character's face, try using a basketball as a reference. It actually is a very good reference and gives you a clear understanding of how these lines will interact with a ball object because that is what the head is, a ball essentially. Now that we've done that, I lightly indicate where the hair is going to be. Now this is very rough, I usually just add on half of the head shape on top of it and just create a sort of rough circle. Now moving on, we want to start working on the rest of the character's frame and keeping this very rough, we need to figure out exactly the type of movement this character is going to be engaged in. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out where that shoulder line needs to be. Once we identify those areas, we can start working off of them and start to work on the arms. Now you notice I start to break this character down into simplistic shapes using a circle for the shoulder, using cylinders for the arms, and just generally keeping my, uh, my shapes very simplistic and easy to work with. Be sure to be taking note exactly where these points meet the body and the torso. It's very important to keep a good, a clear understanding of this. And if you do feel that this is getting a little bit too difficult, I would suggest going out and purchasing a sort of anatomy model. I'll put one up on screen so you can see exactly what I'm referring to. You've probably seen these little wooden dolls around in artist stores. These guys really do help with understanding anatomy and will come into great use when doing your pieces of art. Okay, so our character model is looking pretty good and pretty dynamic and now that we've got to this stage and I will say that this does take quite a bit of time to learn but once you do grasp it, it's a pretty easy concept to get a hold of. From this point, we're going to start building upon this character. Now the good thing with Naruto is he doesn't have much in the way of muscles so we don't really need to build too much on that frame that we've already got but we do need to take into account some of the baggy clothings which we'll get to shortly but for now we're going to start by doing the head. So to do Naruto's head, it's a very rounded figure which actually follows the circle pretty cleanly however we're going to straighten off three of those edges starting with the left cheek and moving around it. Once we've got those, we'll start moving on to the clothes. Now bear in mind that these clothes are going to be baggy and they're going to be hanging off of this frame that we've got. So the minimum distance that you can go is up to the frame, but I would suggest staying away from the frame just a tiny bit just to indicate the thickness of the clothing and allowing yourself to drop away from the clothing a little bit too, because that is, well, it's not Lycra. This isn't skin tight. And this is Naruto. His clothes are a little bit baggy, so you got a little bit of leafway there. I think a good thing to mention here is the folding of clothing on joints and sort of areas where there is any sort of fold. On the insides of these areas, you want to kind of pinch it together. Pinch those clothings together, and the usual way to do this is you just add this sort of, I don't really know what it is, like a tube kind of design on the insides. And typically around the elbow, it would be quite tight. However, as this character's arm is sort of on a horizontal position, gravity is going to be pulling that part of the clothing downwards, so it's going to be slightly baggier and hanging towards the bottom. So we're going to pull the lower part of the clothing away from the frame of the character, while keeping the top part pressed up against the character. Now I'm by no means perfect, I do make mistakes when I draw, and I do actually make some mistakes during this one, but I correct them later on. 
A certain mistake that I'm making right here is I'm actually making this leg way too slim. And that's my fault. I've kept the clothing way too close towards the figure model. I needed to pull it away from it a little bit. And I correct that later on. But that's exactly what this is for. This is supposed to be a rough base. And it's something that you can work on later. When you step back at the end of your drawing, you look at it and you say to yourself, you know what, how does this look? What do I need to change? And you go from there. Now slow down, I hear you saying. We are onto the important part, the hair. This is the part that everyone struggles with. And I'm going to talk you through exactly what's going on right now. So using that base model that we did before and sort of following a circle on top of our head, I'm just going to be adding on these spikes. Now I am keeping them as clean as I can for the sake of this tutorial purposes. But what I would recommend to you is just do some jagged lines. Don't worry about them being clean or perfect. Just work with what's best for you and then build upon it later once you feel it looks decent enough. So now let's get on with the face. I'm going to start by drawing a very small, rough, sort of triangular shape. And this is going to indicate the nose. To do the nose, we're going to use the basketball analogy again. And imagine a line that lines up with the lower ear and comes around to the front. That is where our nose is located. Next up, we're going to move on to the eyes. Now, I like to start with the left eye first. It's entirely up to you which one you prefer to do. My guideline cuts the center of the eyes. So I know from here where I need to sort of be with the lower part of the eye and the upper part of the eye, depending on the expression of the character. But the lower part of the eye generally doesn't change too much. Just the upper part that will change. So focus more on the lower part of the eye first. Keep those eyebrows sharply down to indicate some aggression. And then move on to filling out some of the other features. And bear in mind when you're doing the mouth, how wide does the mouth need to be in relation to the eyes? This one, for example, comes out as far as the eyes begin. Okay, so now this is the part of the drawing where I stop what I'm doing. I stop everything completely and I just look at it. I look and I see what could be changed. What could be made better? Does anything look a bit too short? Anything a bit too long? What can I do here? Always do this before you do the hands and or feet. Honestly, they are a nightmare to change later on. It's just better to do the limbs first. And by changes, I mean, you shouldn't be looking at this and thinking to yourself, okay, this is really bad. This is really bad. These shouldn't be big changes. This should just be things like maybe the arm can be moved to the left slightly. Maybe a little bit of clothing could be added. I don't know, maybe a bit more baggier or tighter. These shouldn't be drastic changes. You should be at this point quite comfortably happy with what you've got, but just a few changes that could make it a little bit better. There shouldn't be an overhaul of the entire piece. And now that I have identified those mistakes we're not going to correct them i'm going to make a few changes here and we'll just go through them right now okay and now this is why i love energy blasts or anything like that you can hide the hands. And now, I know a lot of people don't like drawing hands. Me, I actually enjoy drawing them. They're one of my favorite things to draw on a character. But I know a lot of people do hate drawing them and do struggle with them. So this is great for hiding them. You don't necessarily have to show them here. And all I do is I just draw a circle of what the Rasen gun is going to look like and just sort of indicate the thumb is sort of on display. But the other thing is you don't really have to go into great detail about them. Just put like a few of them hanging over the top, but it doesn't matter. They don't actually have to be cleanly there. Have them equally spaced apart from each other and sort of following a general direction, but nothing special. It doesn't really matter. No one really sees them. So you can get away with a lot here. So now we're at the inking stage. Now this is a fun bit. This is the bit that I enjoy most of all when I'm drawing. It's quite relaxing, it's quite calm. You guys will have a massive advantage right here. You're able to twist the paper. But when you're recording, I pride myself on keeping it cleanly in the center of the recording device. So I do not twist my paper, which makes it pretty difficult for me to ink and I do have to scratch quite a bit. But you guys, what I would suggest is long smooth strokes, hold your breath during those strokes and just keep it relaxed. Don't fear the inking. A lot of people worry and that's actually the reason why most of the inking fails is through the fear of it. The fear of if I make a mistake, I can't fix it. That's not true. If you make a mistake, you can work with it. Every mistake you can work with, uh, bar some maybe, but if you give him like a third eye, then that's on you and that's your mistake and I'm not going to even go into that. But yeah. You can usually fix most mistakes, so don't worry too much about making a mistake. Just be relaxed with it and enjoy the process of it. You will see me jump in between a few pens here, but for the most part, I do use my uni pins, and I would refer you to my fine liner review for a good fine liner. I'll put a link in the description down below. You guys should definitely check that out.
have now come to the most important part of the video and that is the coloring section which is what you guys always want to know and I do my best to let you guys know during my live streams but it does get a little bit crazy and I do use quite a few colors so I tried to simplify this as best as I could and just use a very basic color palette that yields great results so hopefully this will help you guys out now Naruto's skin is quite pinkish so I'm going to be using a pale pink so let's start by layering a single layer across all of the skin areas well a single layer isn't doing it quite well so let's try and lay a second layer on top of that and just see if we get better results all right that's more like it this is the Naruto skin tone we're looking for so the next issue we've got is trying to figure out what we should use for the shadows so I bounced around with a couple ideas here and I started by layering down a sun-kissed pink. The sun-kissed pink for me was a bit too soft, it didn't really give me much depth with it. So I decided to add on top of that a dusky pink. Mm, same results, they didn't really get the colour I was looking for. So finally... I've gone and used a dusky rose. This gave me the exact depth I'm looking for and it looked beautiful. Next up we got the clothing. Now for the clothing I'm going to start by layering down some true blue over the blue areas. For the base of the eye colour I'm going to be using an arctic blue but later on I will add to those eyes and give them a little bit more depth. For the rest of the clothing I went with an amber. Now this colour is quite opaque so it may require another layer but we'll see how it looks. I was right, it's pretty opaque, so we're gonna add a double layer on now and let's see what the difference is. Damn, that looks nice. So moving on to the shadowy areas, I'm gonna be using an indigo blue for the dark blue areas. And for the orange areas, I'm gonna be using mandarin. Now you can substitute this with bright orange. I just had mandarin on hands, but they are pretty much similar colors, if not the same color. So whichever one you choose to use, you can't go wrong. Now one piece of advice I'd like to give you guys is when you're doing the shadows, try not to double layer onto them unless you're going to add a third layer of shadow. The reason being is if you double layer that secondary shadow, it's going to just go way too dark. And you're definitely going to need to add some highlights and or some deeper tones than the two you've already selected. For a little bit of emphasis, considering this character is using a Rasen gun which produces its own light, I figured to just add a bright highlight to the edge that is sort of focused on that Rasen gun. Now don't add the highlight everywhere, just add it on those areas that are clearly in the direction of that energy blast or of your light source. To add this highlight I'm using one of the Arteza branded pencils, the tri-grip ones to be exact, I'm just using the standard white. Now if you guys did want to pick yourself up some cool Arteza products, I have an affiliate link that I will put down below, they're extremely cheap and I would 100% recommend them but this isn't an Arteza video, so let's get back on with this. Now for the white areas including the headband itself, I selected a different bunch of greys from Cool Grey 2 and Cool Grey 3 and double layering that Cool Grey 3 just to add a natural shadow to it. Uh, not really much to say for the hair to be honest, I just picked up a nice neutral yellow colour and then used the gold colour which to be honest isn't really gold, it's kind of like an orangey colour. But it's a bit of an offset orange so yeah. I used yellow and a sort of offset orange I guess you could call it. I mean a sun kissed orange or yellow um, could work but yeah I chose gold for this one. Also leaving myself some room to add some highlights with a white gel pen.
And now that everything is almost done, we just got to do the Rasengan. Now the Rasengan is actually pretty simple to do. I didn't do it the way I usually do, which is with an airbrush, and that would yield much better results. But the reason I didn't do that is because I just don't believe everyone has access to an airbrush. So I wanted to keep it quite simplistic and sort of a way that everyone could do it. So what we've done here is we've got some cloud blue, and I've used that as a base, leaving the center white, and then slowly blending in some light blue into there, and again using my Arteza pencils just to add some swirls in there, uh, using a white gel pen to add some white highlights, nothing too fancy, but don't forget to add like an outer glow rim of light using the light blue pencil. The secret with these blasts and these key energies or chakra energies and things like this is to be simplistic with it. Don't go over the top, it doesn't need to be crazy detailed. I did go a little bit too excessive here I believe, but usually when I use my airbrush it's just a matter of using two colours, a blue and a white, and blending them together and sort of just having a glow. You don't need crazy crazy detail with these. And with that being said, the drawing is complete guys. So now you know how to draw Naruto Uzumaki in a fighting stance. There was a lot to take in with this video and I'm sorry that this video was so long, I tried to squeeze as much information in as I possibly could into a respectable amount of time. If you guys did enjoy this video and you would like to see some more, then please leave a like on this video, subscribe and of course leave a comment down below with your suggestions. Thank you all for stopping by the video, I've been ADC Art Attack and I will see you in the next one. Take care guys, bye bye.